What's up, my Muay Thai? Uh, sitting here at the Team Chu show in London. Ran into none other than Mr. David Chen. What's up, man? Yeah, not much really. I've just got one of our lads on, so I'm just at the event, uh, obviously, to help out in the corner. Uh, who's fighting? Uh, it's a lad called Dan Edwards. Man, he's doing quite well at the minute, so I think so it's definitely one to look out for in the future. I met Dan uh, at the Sassy Brahma camp like maybe a year ago, or eight months ago, a while ago. He's been spending quite a bit of time out there, hasn't he? Yeah, um, he was out there I think for five months when you met him. He's come back to England for the UK, had a couple of fights, gone back out again for like three to four months. He's back here again. I think he'll be going back out again um, in the new year. He's had some uh, big fights recently, hasn't he? Yeah, he's done quite well on the, the domestic scene. Um, he beat uh, Joe Roberts, who's definitely the ice gay British champion, stopped him in the third round. Just before he went out to Thailand again the second time, he beat uh, Kev Ward, who was ranked fifth in the rankings at that time. So obviously, like Dan, I think he's a bit underestimated by people. He's coming through nice and steady now. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Tell me, uh, what happened with uh, the Muay Thai in America show? I was pretty psyched to see uh, Trainer vs. Uh, Rumor of uh, three or two? Two. two. Um, basically, it was about two weeks ago. Obviously, I was all prepared. I was, obviously, it was the one that I was really excited about fighting Rungavi. I enjoyed the first one, so I was really all, all set for this. But um, I had a message from my management saying Rungavi had broke his wrist and he had, he had to pull out, and they're going to swap it with uh, Harit as Papa. That, to be honest, was the fight I was interested in. One, I was going out of my weight division in the first place to fight Rungavi, but I knew what I was letting myself in for with Rungavi. Yeah. He's, He's not, he's not basic, he's kind of basic, but he's very strong and aggressive, so I knew what but to do to deal with him. Yeah, whereas Power, it's very clever, he's tricky, he's completely different to what I was like, prepared for. Yeah. With only a week left of training, just wasn't something I was interested in. Sure. If it was offered the same time frame, like two months prior, there wouldn't have been a problem, but sure. a week to prepare just didn't interest me. It's kind of strange because you train out of there as well when you're back in Thailand, right? So it's like you know a lot of these guys. It you? was. Um, obviously, like for Rungavi, um, I went over, before I fought him the first time, I went over just to train. Mr. Sakoon discussed about me and him potentially fighting and the students in the ring straight away to clinch. I think they were trying to gauge what I was like. When I went over last time, it's kind of a similar thing, uh, but with uh, Power's brother, they just kind of threw me in to see how I got on with um, his brother. So I think they're looking at me just as much as I'm looking at them. Sure. Um, you enjoy training there, don't you? Um, it's very friendly, like obviously, as you can probably know yourself, you go to a lot of gyms in Thailand, the structure's basically the same, it's how you're made to feel welcome when you turn up. Mr. Sakoon's very friendly and everyone else at the gym is very friendly, so like you kind of, you made to feel welcome. Well, I've been to sort. I've been to gyms where there's no foreigners at all, and you kind of look down upon, and you're not given the same type of uh, encouragement, and that can be a bit off-putting to someone who's not that keen in the sport. So, got it that you weren't able to uh, fight on that show. Uh, do you have anything coming up? Um, not at the moment, I'm going to chill out obviously over Christmas, just wait for some offers to come, come in. I've had a few offers in the past I've been un unable to take. I was actually offered to fight um, Pentai Simpaton in France uh, just a few months ago. But because it was like getting short notice, I couldn't take it. But I'm hoping something like that pops up again. Sure. Now you were 33? 33, 33 this week. 33 this week. How many, uh, how many years are left in Damien Trainer's legs? Um, I don't. I don't know because like, my style's kind of changed. I was, I was a bit younger. I was a bit like younger and reckless, not going all guns blazing. As I've got older, I'm a bit more clever, more clinical. So I reckon I've got probably like a good couple of years left fighting-wise. And um, plan on any plans after that, or are you just c focused on your next fight? Uh, I've got a few things in mind, but I'll keep them close to my chest until it's ready to announce. Um, I saw that the Brits did. Did well in America. I know. Um, did you see any of the results? Yeah, I saw obviously like Greg Wilton, I believe, won by third round TKO, which is obviously an amazing yep. like result. I think uh, Paul won as well. I think it was a point decision, I think, but obviously he won. Um, Salah won again. I think that was the third round as well. Yep. And obviously, obviously the, the fight everyone was talking about was Julie and Amanda. Yep. And Amanda thinks that the points decision, which yep. I'm looking forward to actually watching the fights myself. Yeah, I don't. Uh, well. Uh, most of you guys uh, know this already, but Damien is also uh, has an amazing uh, website. Uh, lots of great articles. Um, we'll be sure to post it somewhere here, the address on the screen. Um, I think you're really 
one of the only active fighters I know who uh, has a bar. What? How did that come about? Um, so I thought I'm quite interested in like media and stuff, and I was just talking to um, a guy who makes websites, and he said he could make me one, so he, he did it. Originally, it was only used for um, it was going to be used for advertising my fights and stuff, but um, I've seen I've got a lot of tales over the years, and I've, I tell people them, and they say, "Oh, you should put that down." So obviously, that's how it all started. So for a while, I've got a lot to me. Um, I want to try and inspire people and show that I'm no different to what they are. I feel the same things, I have the same kind of issues that crop up and obviously how I dealt with them might be able to help them in their careers. One of my favourite on. posts uh, that you've written is that sometimes you have to do things that you don't want to do. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've never been in that position, don't get me wrong, but like in many ways you can relate in, in, in your life how you put in those positions where you look around and you're like, what am I doing here? How did, how, how did this happen? What decisions have I made to put me right yes, here, right yeah. now? Um, obviously, on the fighting side of things, obviously, if you, you've got to get up and go running, you don't want to do it. You have those days in the gym where you just think, I really can't be bothered to obviously give it my all today. But obviously, in a fight, you've got to, sometimes you might not want to like get into a hard fight, but you're going to have to deal with it. You can't just pull out. And obviously, whatever you do in the gym reflects what you're going to do in the ring and obviously reflects what you're going to do in all your life as well. Well, look, mate. Um, I'm glad that I uh, had a chance to run into you today. It was very fortuitous. Um, we're going to stay in touch and hopefully we'll be seeing you fight in the UK soon. Hopefully. Or something. Great, man. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Always a pleasure. And uh, everyone, make sure you go out and uh, read his uh, blog, uh, Bookmarket. And um, I'll catch you soon. Okay. Thanks, man.